Coming up, a powerful story of one BC woman's journey out of addiction and the sex trafficking industry, and see how generosity led to unexpected prosperity. Welcome to 700 Club Canada. What a great week it's been and our partnership week all for one has been the theme. And you know, I just want to express my gratitude and thankfulness for those who have been watching with us all week and for those who continue to support the work that we do here at 700 Club Canada. Yeah, absolutely. We could not do this without you. And so for all of you who joined us this week, decided to become a partner this week, Thank you, and it's also not too late. Maybe today is your day. Let's do this together, and let's believe that God wants to do something amazing in the nation of Canada, and mm -hmm. he will do it when we all do it as one. one. Yeah. yeah, and that's what this week's been exactly. for, all about, all for one, right? Exactly. Well, up first, a traumatic childhood set, Jennifer on a path of destruction until God showed her a better way. My life as a survival sex worker, I lived a life of constant addiction, fearfulness, and hopelessness. I was constantly filled with the fear that the next client was going to murder me. My mom was a residential school survivor, and so that really deeply affected her life. She became a drug addict and alcoholic as a result of it. By age 21, she had me. I was removed from my mother's care because my mother went to federal prison for murder. And my grandmother took care of me for the first couple of years of my life. And then she couldn't take care of me because she got very sick, so my aunt took care of me. She became very physically abusive towards me. So then I was taken away by the RCMP and put into the white foster care system. The first home I was in, I was sexually abused, so I was moved on to other homes. And then eventually I got into another home where I had a very lovely foster mother who was a Caucasian Christian, and I lived with her for nine years. And so I grew up in a white home, I went to a white community, and I went to a white school. By the time they were done, I thought I was white. Jennifer became a survivor of what is now referred to as the 60s scoop. Throughout the 1960s, thousands of Indigenous children were removed from their families and placed in non-Indigenous homes. I had a lot of issues with my identity. I had trouble understanding being First Nations. Being around Native society, it, it was just alien to me. When I aged out of foster care, I went to go live with my First Nations aunt uncle in Prince Rupert, British Columbia. So I was horrified to see all the domestic violence and addiction that was going on. I wasn't used to it. So I used to go to the nightclubs with my cousin a lot to get away from it. And I came across some men who invited my cousin and I to their house for a party. What I didn't realize is that they were out looking for women to pick up to introduce into the sex trade. Jennifer was lured into prostitution as a teenager. Years later, she once again entered the sex trade for survival and ended up on the streets of Vancouver. It was very dangerous to work in the survival end of the sex trade because many times I was physically abused, I was beat up, I was robbed, I got raped once. Many women I worked with the streets with were missing and some are now, and they're now dead. I didn't like what I had to do. So when I was done my date, I would go do something, make myself feel good, so I'd go drinking. And alcohol numbed you and helped you for a while. And then I got introduced to crack cocaine. And I started doing that, and I was instantly addicted the first time I did it. And then crack cocaine took over my life and ran it. Then I went to work the streets to get my next fix, not to get money to pay the rent. So I felt total hopelessness. I felt powerlessness. I felt, I felt very angry, I was full of rage. I had a lot of hatred towards society because society didn't care if anything happened to me. And I didn't feel like I really had a future. Fearing for her life on the streets, Jennifer reached out to a sex worker organization that helped her move into a brothel to give her a measure of safety. I had just got into the brothel, into my room, and I was cleaning everything up, and I just turned on the TV, and I switched into the channels, and I came across a show called The 700 Club with Pat Robertson. And I started watching it. And then I saw these stories come on about how Jesus healed this person from their drug addiction, how this person, you know, got cleaned up of their criminal record, and I started to wonder, when was my turn? I 
I got sick and tired of being addicted. I got sick and tired of poverty. I just got sick and tired of the lifestyle. I believed in God, but I didn't know how to obey him or to worship him. I had no mentors to show me how to be in a proper relationship with God. That's when I had enough. I went and saw another sex worker organization. They came, they packed me up, moved me out, and moved me into a women's shelter. And a year later, I went into a recovery house with the Union Gospel Mission to get clean out of the sex trade and out of the drug trade. I believed for a long time, especially in the survival sex trade, that Christians were judgmental people who didn't care about people like me. It changed after I came in contact with the Salvation Army and they started to treat me with a lot of love and dignity and they talked to me as, as a human being. And then the more Christians I got involved that started treating me like a human being, I started to change my attitude and how I saw them. I had already started going to Bible studies with the Salvation Army on a weekly basis. And so I was surrounded by many Christians. And I decided to start taking my faith serious with Jesus. And so I contacted the Salvation Army to go to their Bible college to become a Salvation Army soldier. Since I've submitted to Jesus, my life has turned around dramatically. I've been clean for seven years. I've been sober for eight years. I've gone back to school, got my education to become a pastor. My husband and I live out our faith through authentic Christian living where we live in the, in the downtown east side in the ghetto with the people. We live in the SROs with them and we do Bible studies with them and we work with them and we work within the community we live in. So we run something called Midnight Ministries where we go in the back alleys and the streets and we hand out food and we provide crisis counseling and we pray for people and we also respond to drug overdoses. God's given me a lot of self-esteem that I can do things with my life. And, and it, most of all, God lets me know if I hand my life over to Him, He can do amazing things with it. Before I came to Jesus, I didn't feel I belonged to anything. I was just wandering through life, trying to find happiness. And the hope I have in my life now is that I can actually have a life outside of drug addiction and prostitution, and then I can actually be happy. Before Christ, I didn't have an identity. I was whatever identity I was doing at the time. So if I was a survival sex trade worker, if I was a drug addict, that's who I was. And I believed that's who I was. And today as a Christian, I know my identity is in Christ. So I'm a child of the King. I'm created in His image. I'm a citizen of heaven. And the biggest thing is that I actually believe it. Well, Emily, if you ever wondered, does it make a difference? Mm, there is absolute so proof. And yeah. I am just so grateful for the opportunity that 700 Club Canada had to be a part of this amazing story of transformation. And so your partnership does matter. Yes. It does matter in lives. And if you're watching this right now and you need a transformation, we are here for you as well. Yeah, and as I hear Jennifer's story, I realize mm. the impact of what 700 Club Canada is doing and all the ministries that we partner with as Absolutely. well, if you see in their union gospel mission and, and what they're doing to change lives. So this is the impact that 700 Club Canada makes, sharing that Jesus loves you and has a purpose in your life changes hearts. Where would Jennifer be if she had not seen the show? With so many levels to give and so many ways to make an impact, why don't you call us today at 1-855-759-0700 or you can text GIVE to 873-437-0700. Well, after the break, we have a word from a partner ministry and William and Emily had two financial strategies. See how God's won them over. On behalf of YSM, I would like to say a personal thank you. Because of your faithful giving, we've been able to continue to support community members in need with things like groceries, takeaway meals, and mental health supports. All of these things have contributed to their ability to overcome the challenges that they face as they struggle with the realities of living in poverty and seeking to overcome them. Thank you.
When Emily and William McCauley first married, they didn't see eye to eye on finances. I didn't want him to keep buying stuff until he was out of debt with other things. We would argue a lot about all different kinds of finance problems. He knew that that's what I did with my money was, you know, give 10% to the church. I was a waitress, so I took a, you know, if I made $80, I took $8 and would set it in my drawer until Sunday when I would go to church. When we first got married, uh, we both had our own uh, checking accounts anyway, so we just kind of kept going, this is her money, this is my money. She did what she did with hers, and I did what I did with mine. The couple bought a working farm near Lexington, Kentucky, and William started an excavation business. Emily worked as a medical billing specialist. Most of my debt we started off with came from buying the equipment to, to start out excavating. It's a, that business is kind of high cost to entry. You know, you gotta spend money to make money is his mentality on things. I also think that um, God's gonna provide if we're doing the right thing with our money. It didn't take long to snowball a lot of money together uh, in debt. It did strain our marriage. It, uh, it was tough. William and Emily continued to have separate bank accounts, but Emily tithed faithfully from hers. Her expenses never did exceed what she had in her account, and she was always able to save money. And I could run six or seven days a week and never could get ahead. After the birth of their first child, William asked his wife to consider being a full-time mom. She agreed, but under one condition. She pretty much told me for her to quit her job that I had to start tithing. And I was, I was so amped for her to come home and raise our kids that I said, sure, sure, we'll, we'll start tithing. Soon, God began to bless their business. Instead of having a day or two long jobs, we were there for months. So all our jobs were getting longer and better, better paying jobs. Checks just showed up. Now nearly all of their debts are paid off and William is sold on the principle of tithing. Well, I've probably turned 180 from where I started. Well, I was trying to pay my bills first before I give the money to the church. That's obvious, that was wrong. <laughs> That's completely wrong. So, but it took a long time for me to figure that out. He's excited about it as I am and uh... He know, he'll say now that there's no way that he would ever go back to not tithing. Today, the McCauleys enjoy giving to their church, to missions work, and to the local community. We're able at church, you know, to be able to help all the missionaries. Because we tithe, the Lord has blessed us and we are able to provide for more people in the community. At the end of the day, you can't afford not to give. It's just not, it's not worth it. You know, you see people every day that is working night and day, working so hard, um, and you just want to sit down and tell them, like, look, if you just knew that if you would give 10% to the church, that things would drastically change for you. But rich or poor, it doesn't matter until you realize that this is all God's and it's for us to be generous with. You'll always be chasing the wind, looking for the next dollar. As I listened, a phrase that kept going through my head was, see what God can do, mm. right? Like just see what he can do as we give and invest with what he's given to us. You know, I went to a church where they would do this 90 day money back guarantee. And they would say like, if you start giving and you don't see God do something, we will give your money back. Not that they were trying to play games or anything, but it was really to say, hey, God is faithful. And as we are faithful, we'll see that. Well, I do believe, really, the whole week could be summarized in one word, trust. Mm, yes. What or who do you trust? Do you trust right. your money or do you yeah. trust God? I remember when I was a kid, my mom had us memorize, trust the Lord with all your heart. Mm -hmm. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your paths straight. And I think when it comes to our money, many of us lean on our own understanding. Right. And yes. it causes destruction and frustration. But when you do it God's way, he promises you can trust him in everything. And so we want to encourage you to trust God. And one of the ways that we do is by partnering and investing in organizations and ministries that are doing great work. And so I want to encourage you to invest with us. By becoming a monthly partner today, uh, you can take advantage of our free premium uh, to new partners. It's a DVD called How to Believe for Healing. There's a DVD and a workbook. And also, just this week only, so today's the last day you can take advantage of this. If you partner with us today, you get this great DVD entitled Life Beyond the Grave. So why not call us at one 855 
759-0700, or you can even text the word GIVE to 873-437-0700. And if you're already a monthly partner, would you consider today, it's Friday, the last of this week, increasing your monthly giving, like joining our 2500 Club membership today. So call now and let us know that you want to be a part of the 2500 Club, which is just over $200 a month. So the number's on the screen there, it's one 855 seven five nine zero seven hundred and i want to remind you that you can trust god we trust god and together we can see god do some amazing things in the amazing nation of canada i believe god wants to do something great in canada and i believe he wants to use you and i to accomplish that so let's partner together to see that happen whatever you can do today would be a great help in seeing this accomplished well after the break an act of obedience leads to a financial breakthrough for a struggling single mom. Watch this. You can have a miracle. Jesus came for you. Get the new exclusive video from Gordon Robertson. How to believe for healing. In this powerful message, you'll discover why God desires to heal your specific sickness. How you can claim victory over your infirmity by stepping out in faith. Plus, watch encouraging stories of people who received abundant healing from God. The doctor said it's as if it was never there. Then, go deep into God's miraculous plan for healing you with a special teaching from Gordon. We're going to give you some principles to hold on to. How to Believe for Healing also includes a workbook to help increase your faith. Get the How to Believe for Healing collection when you become a CBN partner. Call now or go to CBN.com. Available now. The kingdom of heaven is drawing near to you. Reach up and grab it right now. Queens native Sabrina Isaac calls the Big Apple home. She's a single mom to son Sky and daughter Soraya, who's away at college. She works at her dream job as a police officer in the New York State Courts. I've always had a love for the law. As a court officer, I'm exposed to almost all aspects of the law, and I get to do what I love. Years earlier, she was working at New York City's social services, struggling to provide for her children. She often used credit cards to get by. Kids are expensive. Living in New York is expensive. It was financially challenging to you know, maintain my household on my own. I know that I needed something, but I didn't know what exactly it was. A Christian friend suggested she pray to God about her situation and invited her to Temple of Restoration Church in Brooklyn. It was just a phenomenal ministry, and it was everything I needed at that time in my life. Sabrina began studying the Bible daily and applied everything she learned to her life. But she had trouble understanding the lesson about giving away money until her pastor explained Malachi 3.10. It's the only scripture in the Bible where the Lord says to try me on this. He says, challenge me. If the Lord is saying to challenge me on giving, then I'm gonna try, I tried. She also made another big change regarding finances. She cut up her credit cards and little by little paid off her debt. But her feeling of victory was short-lived. She received a letter that she was laid off and had two weeks left at her job. Sabrina took the letter to church and prayed for God to intervene. During the service, her pastor said something that caught her attention. He said, there's somebody in here that's gonna get a call in three days from their dream job. And right there, like, I knew that it was me. Three days later, the New York court's office offered her a job that she had applied for months before. Sabrina was on her way to the police academy. It was amazing. There's no words that could actually express my feeling, my emotions. I was just, it was awesome. It was amazing. Her salary doubled and her worries about money disappeared. Sabrina believes she's where she is today because of God's faithfulness. For those considering giving, she has some advice. Trust God, try him, try him. Try him. Well, God will take the little that you have and do exceedingly and abundantly above what you can imagine. He will blow your mind.
It all started in the late 60s when the U.S. 700 Club program began broadcasting into Canada through border TV stations, and Canadian viewers started calling the U.S. prayer line to pray with the host. Then in 1974, CBN registered the Christian Broadcasting Associates in Canada with a mission to be culturally relevant. That included the first Canadian prayer center as well as follow-up for the growing correspondence from viewers. The ministry impact grew and the 700 Club program started airing on many national and local Canadian stations all across Canada. And in response to humanitarian needs, 14 Operation Blessing storefronts were opened to help those in need by providing food and clothing. Well, hello and welcome to the first edition. The 90s launched a new era with the birth of Canadian edition, a weekly show hosted by David Geyertsen and Alex Perichin. The show focused on relevant topics from a Canadian perspective while also sharing the gospel. And what the 700 Club does and CBN and CBA is committed to is to communicating the necessity of a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And that, I think, will capture the hearts of Canadians. Airing nationwide on Canadian stations, it became a very popular program. Our numbers and statistics have been jumping exponentially uh, since we've launched uh, Canadian Edition, and we're literally reaching thousands of people a month on the counseling lines, coming to Jesus, getting filled with the Spirit, being set free from demonic power, set free from alcoholism, drugs, bondages, you name it. Jesus is alive and well in Canada. Then in 2011, a daily show, The 700 Club Canada, was birthed. Hosted by Brian Warren and Laura Lynn Tyler Thompson, this program included Bible teaching, Jesus bore our sins, diverse interviews, and testimonial stories. We pray right now by the power and the authority of Jesus Christ that every weapon formed against this marriage be broken now in Jesus' name. But the Bible makes it very clear there's only one name underneath heaven on earth where men must be saved and then it's in the name of Jesus. And in just five years, a milestone was reached with 1,000 new shows. What a wonderful achievement. And I imagine when you started, you saw, thought, okay, well, this, I'll, I'll see how this goes. But here we are years later, and you're still doing it. May God bless you richly for what you're doing, and may many come into the kingdom of God. Follow-up strategy also increased with 24-7 prayer line, available to receive thousands of calls and messages. Another initiative was launched, including partnerships with churches to reach children through Superbook. Then, in 2018, Lori Hartshorn joined as co-host on the daily 700 Club Canada show, adding unique ways to encourage viewers to live courageously for Jesus. I really believe we live in a blessed nation, and God loves Canada, and it's his heart to reach every single person in Canada with the good news. That's why we do what we do, and I pray even today that you are sharing the good news with those that you love and those around you. Another milestone was soon reached with the broadcast of 2,000 unique shows. And during this time, CBA created partnerships with other ministries, addressing issues like homelessness, poverty, and human trafficking in a compassionate Christian manner. And then the ministry expanded to include a presence on social media platforms to reach a new audience with the gospel. Even with the onset of the COVID pandemic, 700 Club uh, Canada think, was strategic in ministering right to people and included Israel even again, more guests all across time Canada time to, to talk about yourself. relevant issues and share hope from a distinctive Christian perspective. Then, in 2021, Bill Markham joined as co-host on the daily 700 Club Canada show, bringing a fresh perspective to sharing the gospel. And if you need freedom, you need Jesus to take your pain today, I want to invite you to pray with me right now a simple prayer. There have been a lot of changes and growth to the ministry over 50 years, yet the goal remains the same. With God's grace, we are reaching the lost, sharing hope, connecting with people, and reaching the far ends of Canada with the transformational message of the gospel. So I think Pat Robertson would look at Canada and go, you guys are an amazing success because you made it. You made it through the early days, you made it through the difficult days, you made it through the good days, and you are making an impact in your nation. So I think he would very simply say, well done, good and faithful servants.
Well, I just want to say thank you for all of those who joined us today and joined us all week in Partner Week, all for one. And Emily, what are some of the things you're taking away from this week? Yeah, well, first, nothing is impossible with God, right? That is so he true. can do uh, so much mm. in and through. And again, like you said it on one of our shows, you said God wants to partner with us. Yes. And so let's see what He can do. But also, nothing is impossible when we partner together. Like, mm. see what God does through us as we partner. We need each other. And that has been clear. We need to hear stories of hope, we need to hear pr- uh, stories of transformation, we need to pray for one another and how incredible it is to be able to be such a widespread nation and yet be able to do this together. I love that. And and for me, it's really been a reminder that money is really just a tool and how you use it really does matter. When you don't know how to use the resources God has given you for his kingdom, it just frustrates you and it ends Mm. in an empty life. But when you invest in the way God gives invests in you, it brings transformation. And even watching that video of our history, the transformation that takes place when we trust God. So trust God today. And today is the last day of Partner Week. And so I want to invite you to join us in our mission of compassion. Your monthly partnership enables us to expand our reach and make this program humanitarian support and prayer accessible to all. So why not reach out today, right now at 1-855-759-0700 and say that you want to partner with the 700 Club Canada. Or you can text the word GIVE to 873-437-0700. Together, let's make a difference. And I want to thank you in advance for your generosity and partnership. We really are all for one. Yeah, and we want to pray for some of you today who have submitted your requests. We want to pray for Rachel. She says, please pray for a financial breakthrough. And Sharon says, please pray for my son who is really struggling financially. Pray that he would find another job. So God, we just lift up these requests to you. God, we have seen that you are our provider, that you are a God who cares about um, us and our needs. And God, we just pray right now that you would provide for these individuals, that you would show them uh, who you are in their lives and that they would trust you with what you've given them. Amen. Amen. Well, I hope today you've been encouraged, inspired, and empowered that together we can make a difference in this amazing nation we call home, the nation of Canada. Our power verse today is found in Matthew 7, verse 11, where it says, If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? So trust him today, invest in the kingdom, and see what God will do. Thank you so much for joining us this week. To contact us, visit 700club.ca. On the next 700 Club Canada, the love of God leads one man to abandon his gang life and an abuse survivor shares her journey of overcoming pain through faith.